Let's start with a disclaimer. I'm not a BJD expert. I'm in this hobby since 2016 and basically still a noob myself. I did not come up with most of these methods myself. They are mostly a mixture of different tutorials and the helpful answers of a lot of lovely people. Everything I show in this video works fine for me, but keep in mind that these dolls are expensive and you should always do your best to be cautious with them. So do your research and don't be afraid to ask questions. Most people out there, myself included, are willing to help. Well, at least if your question can't be answered by a simple five-minute Google search yourself. <laughs> also, there is doll nudity in this video. If you don't want to look at this kinda anatomically correct doll, this is your moment to leave. Hi and welcome back. Today we have something a bit differently. On Instagram I get a lot of questions regarding BJDs and one of the most asked questions is about restringing. So we will tackle that today. Some of you may know about BJDs. They are dolls that are strung with an elastic running through their body. And if it's strung tightly enough, it can pose like a dream. This doll though, you can see how loose he is. So it's time for some care. You will need some thin wire that can pass through the tunnels in the body. Cut them long enough to go through the limbs. <laughs> Pliers are not exactly necessary, but will make your life a lot easier. You also need something to push between the elastic to keep it in place. Get something that's stable enough to not break. <laughs> we need the hot glue gun to suede the body to make the resin less slippery. I usually do this on the ground on a soft blanket, so the body blushing of my dolls doesn't get messed up. Let's start with undressing him. Taking the doll apart can seem scary, but it's not that difficult actually. For most dolls, it's easiest to just take out the S-hook and then get out the elastic. And this is where my brain froze and I switched off my camera. Yes, I'm smart. <laughs> um, so yeah, I made a substitute video to show how to take apart the doll. You take off the head cap or faceplate and I usually get some pliers to grab the hook because my fingers are too thick. <coughs> um, lift the hook a bit and then turn it to the side so it fits through the hole. Then just let the elastic slip from the hook and into the body. Now all you have to do is unhook the feet. Unhook? Is that even a word? I don't know. Um, you take off the feet. And voila! And now you can take out the elastic. Some dolls have some very interesting ways of stringing, like this Ippelhaus doll where the elastic crosses in the hip part. Um, I personally advise taking photos of your doll while taking it apart if it's a new doll um, so you know how to put it back together in the end. Um, and always make sure to keep the parts separated, so don't get yourself confused. Yeah well, um, as you can see sometimes it's a bit troublesome. <laughs> Um, the elastic is deep down in the belly, so I'm struggling quite a bit uh, with actually getting it out. Stuff is easier with smaller dolls. <clears throat> anyway, back to the upper body. Taking off the hands works just like with the feet. You pull them out and unhook them. I forgot about this. Oh, I hate those. So yeah, <laughs> while recording this I remembered how terrible hard it was the last time to take off the hands on Ippelhaus House dolls and more importantly to take them back on. So I was kind of trying if I could tighten the elastic without having to take him apart but nope, <laughs> not a chance. So I struggled and struggled and struggled to get one hand off, failed to get off the other one and then... 
I digress. Um, this was just to show you how to take the doll apart, so back to my Uno. <laughs> to put the hot glue on the doll, take a piece of thin cardboard, get the glue on it and then spread it on the doll in a thin layer. That's the safe way to do it at least. It never really works for me because my hot glue gun doesn't get hot enough, I guess, and the glue cools down while spreading and then sticks to the card. So what I do instead, I apply some glue on the resin and then smooth it out with the hot nozzle of my hot glue gun. I get a very thin layer with this and also get into all the tiny joints. I'm not sure if too high heat could damage the resin, but as I said, mine doesn't get very hot, the resin barely heats up at all and I can touch the glue almost immediately after spreading it out. And this is what you now have to repeat on all the joints. Make sure to put the pieces together every now and then to check if the glue is thin enough and to test if they still move freely or if there's too much space between them. You get the point. Repeat until all joints are treated like this. So, let's start the restringing. What I do is spread it out over the doll and see how much it stretches. I still have quite a few centimeters to give. So I just make a new knot a bit under the old one. I don't cut the elastic yet. For me it's a lot of trial and error to get the right tension so I'd rather be safe than sorry. Like this I can undo what I did if it's too tight. But as you can see, it still stretches nicely over the arms. Now get your wire, thread it through the string and then through the armholes. Loop the elastic over the neck to keep it in place and repeat on the other side. I usually work on both arms or legs at the same time to get the elastic balanced out nicely. Thread the elastic through each piece and keep it in place with your brushes or whatever you chose to stick into the loop. When you're done, hook in the hands and ta-da! You're done with the torso. You see me struggling a bit here because honestly restringing is easier with someone who can lend you an extra pair of hands. But it's absolutely possible to do it yourself with a bit of elbow grease. In fact, I took him apart again after recording to tighten the elastic a bit more because his arms were still too loose to keep their pose nicely. For the rest of the body, repeat the steps before. Lay out your doll, fold the elastic in half with the knot a few centimeters under the fold. Then stretch it out again to estimate how much you can take away, make your knot and string your doll. As you can see, there's still a lot of room for cutting. For dolls like Minifei and Onoa, I got best results with the elastic just peeking out from the hip joint. But again, this highly depends on the doll, the type of stringing and of course the elastic. So as you see, I keep trying the elastic with different lengths before I finally make my knot. First of all, thread it through the neck and secure it with the hook. This doll didn't come with a hook, but just a straight piece of metal and I exchanged it with a screw-in hook here. I put on the head for this so it doesn't get too tight to put it back on in the hand, but be careful if your head has a face up. Make sure both ends of the elastic are the same length and correct it if not.
once you've reached the knees, you might want to change position if you don't have someone to help you hold your doll. If it's strung tightly, you will need your legs to hold on tightly to that doll. Obviously, you have to be careful with this if your doll has body blushing, etc. I only do it in soft sweatpants or with a soft blanket in between. And this was pretty much the point where I realized he wasn't tight enough. It was too easy to get the feedback on. So I took him apart again, tightened the elastic and put him back together another time. I already know this, this, I have to do this again. This is still not tight enough. Yeah, it's, it's better, but nope, nope, nope. So, a bit frustrated, but not willing to give up yet, I took him apart again, shortened the elastic again, and put him back together again. And finally, this is what I mean, oops. If you can just hook it in, then it's usually perfect. I was finally happy with the result. His legs weren't wobbly anymore and his arms could keep a pose. So after that, I wanted to get a bit more of stability into the legs with some wiring, because his knees don't like to stay in a pose between straight and bent. For this, you just cut a piece of wire that's about the length of the leg and push it into the tunnel next to the elastic. This can be a bit difficult depending on how wide the tunnel is, but I've made some really nice experiences with it. To protect the resin from scratches from the wire, you should put a drop of hot glue on the end of the wire but I forgot that here. I changed that later. So, while I get him dressed up again, let me tell you that after I stopped recording, I took him apart a third time and tightened the elastic of both his arms and legs another time. I wasn't happy with the result. He could pose and stand, yes, but not as nicely as I wished. Plus, he didn't pass the standing on one leg test, so there's that. <laughs> um, but yeah, ever since I found out what a good restringing and suede can do to the posing of a doll, I wanted to learn it. So, a big thank you to you, dear Wabi-chan. Without your inspiring pictures, I would never have realized the magic behind it. Not to mention the countless times you patiently helped me with answering my questions. If you're on Instagram, definitely check her out. And also check out Safa BJD Tailoring, who made this amazing outfit. I link them all down in the description, of course. <laughs> so, after restringing and sweating him, he now can stand on one leg. Woohoo! <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope it was at least a bit helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. And to everyone else, don't worry, I have several WePaint videos in the making. Bye!